Hey folks, Joe Emans here. Welcome to another Friday talking video. <laughs> uh, so there's been some Q&A on my Twitter and Facebook, and I think this one came from David Spector. I'm going to be doing this Q&A stuff, probably like maybe one or two questions a week on the Friday talking videos. Um, so I think this one came from David Spector who said, uh, I'd like to hear the story of how I got started in the wrestling business. So basically, I've been a fan since I was probably three or four years old. My brother, my older brother, much older, used to uh, watch all the time at the house, but he used to buy magazines, like back when they were printed on like that newspaper. It's got that newspaper feel to it. Um, there weren't glossy pictures or glossy pages yet, uh, but he used to buy a bunch of magazines back then he would cut out the pictures of the guys in them. I posted some pictures of this on Twitter, actually, on uh, Christmas Day, because he found them and brought them to my house for Christmas uh, to show it to me. But he would cut the pictures out and, like, paste them in this, like, notebook he had where he would write, like, such and such and such and such, you know, on whatever date and in this arena, so-and-so won the title from this guy. So I'm, like, flipping through it. And uh, I'll post those pictures, actually. I'll link those tweets uh, in the description below so you can actually see those pictures. They're really cool. Um, so I'm flipping through it, and he's got pictures of everybody from, from back in the day. Um, again, black and white, not glossy, just black and white photos of, like, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, Nick Bockwinkle, uh, Pampiro Furpo, um, oh, Jesus, Bruno Sammartino, Pedro Morales, uh, you know, Ken Patera, just all these old-school pictures. It was really cool. Uh, so I started watching because of him. He would watch it in the house, and I would watch it. Um, so <clears throat> after that, I eventually obviously became a, a fan myself. He had moved out, gone to college, whatever. Um, so I just always watched it. It was something I always wanted to watch. And um, I had to watch... Uh, <laughs> I remember it was on... At 12 noon was Wrestling Challenge on Saturdays on Channel 5. And Sunday was... Uh, I'm sorry, Saturday was Superstars of Wrestling, and Sunday was Wrestling Challenge, but uh, Saturday's the Century 21, like, home show, like, the for sale show, that was on first at 11, and then wrestling came on at 12, so if I wanted to watch wrestling, I had to watch this dumb home show thing first that my mother always liked to watch, so I would have to watch that or sit through that at, like, 11-ish while I was waiting to, to get control of the TV at 12 so I could flip on Channel 5 and um, put on WWF uh, Superstars. And <clears throat> I always watched it. Like, I would watch it. It was 12 to 1. And I played Little League at the time. And uh, I think Little League games started like 2 o'clock. But we would have to be at the field by like 1.30. So I would watch it until 1, get dressed. My father or my, or my mother or both, whatever, would drive me down to the field. And I would talk about it with all my, my teammates Everybody was into wrestling. I, I mean, I'll never forget um, the day that Beefcake did the... Shout out to Brutus, <laughs> my buddy. I'll never forget the day that Beefcake and Sensational Sherry were on... Uh, I think it was on the barbershop when he called her Scary Sherry and the whole arena was chanting, Scary Sherry. So I'll never forget that. And I went down to the field that day for the game and I was talking to Paul Danalo, a guy I went to high school with. And uh, he was like, did you see the Scary Sherry thing? I'm like, yeah, it was hilarious. And blah, blah. So I was a fan all, you know, all my years growing up, whatever, from about three or four years old. And then when I saw, um, God, I think this was WrestleMania 3, maybe. Uh, it was a Junkyard Dog and Harley Race. I don't remember when that was. I thought it was maybe Mania 3. Uh, it was like, <clears throat> excuse me, the winner had to get crowned, I think it was by the loser, and Harley Race won, JYD had to put the crown on him, and he gave him a chair shot, and when I saw that chair shot, I was like, yo, that looks cool, I want to do that, so ever since then, whenever that was, uh, I think that was probably 87-ish, uh, so I was, my birthday's in June, that was March of 87, um, so I was still, uh, I hadn't hit my uh, 10th birthday yet. I was still nine years old. And ever since that moment, I wanted to become a wrestler. I wanted to do that. Whatever whatever that was at the time, I didn't know. I, I'm, obviously, I knew it was wrestling. I didn't know how you got into it. I didn't know how, obviously, anything. So years and years went by. I started seeing ads in, uh, 
I think it was Pro Wrestling Illustrated, all the Bill After magazines, um, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, stuff like that. Uh, the Wrestler, let me see, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, The Wrestler, uh, Wrestling USA, I think was another one. Inside Wrestling was another one. Uh, they always had ads for wrestling schools, and I'm like, oh, this is cool, but they're all so far away, and I'm like, you know, 15. Like, my parents aren't going to drive me to, to Indiana or whatever to go to wherever. So I ended up hearing about the Monster Factory in South Jersey in Plainsboro, and, uh, or sorry, Paulsboro, and I wanted to go there, but again, that was far. There's no way I can get there, blah, blah, blah. So fast forward to... Uh, 20, probably 20, yeah, I must have been 23 at the time. I was 23 years old when I started. Um, so this was earlier that year. And uh, I was dating a girl who worked at a store that made t-shirts and hats. So they did like the um, the embroidering on like hats and t-shirts and stuff. So they did logos and, and whatever, words and, and phrases and stuff like that. Um, and two guys, two independent wrestlers, obviously I didn't know that at the time, but they came in to get hats and shirts made for their tag team. And she was like, oh, you guys wrestle. Like, my boyfriend wants to do that. Uh, can you maybe tell me how to get into it or whatever? And, uh, you know, not to toot my own horn, but she was a 5'9". She was a tall, gorgeous blonde. And a tall, gorgeous blonde says, hey, give me your phone number. Even if even if the next part of the sentence is so I can give it to my boyfriend, you're going to give me your phone number. <laughs> So, uh, so the, the one guy, Mike gave her my number or gave her my, his number. Uh, and she called me right away. She's like, yo, these two guys just came in. They're independent wrestlers at the time. I, by then I had become aware of independent wrestling and I had been to a few shows, but like years before that, I didn't even know it existed. Um, so, uh, I'd gone to a couple shows and then this happened and she called me right away. And after work, uh, when she when she got off work, her and I used to meet up at this diner right by her job, uh, the suburban diner in Paramus, and just whatever, just eat. And then I'd go home, and she'd go home. So she's like, oh, I'll, I'll tell you all the info later at the diner. I'm, I'm still working, blah, blah, blah. So she leaves work, comes and meets me, explains the whole story to me. These guys came in looking for hats and shirts, blah, blah, blah. Here's the guy's number. His name is Mike. I'm like, great. I'll call him tomorrow. I call him the following day. And back then, it was like... I don't know, everyone just answered the phone. Like, it wasn't like, and there was no cell phones back then. This was, I mean, I'm sure there were cell phones, but they were the, the big suitcase kind with the handset. This was, um, this was mid-1999. So, I called the guy the next day, and like I said, everyone answered their phone back then. There was no, like, you know, I don't recognize this number, so I'm not going to answer it. It was just like, hello? And then if it was, if it was a spam or a scam or recording, whatever, he just hung up or a prank, whatever. So this guy answered the phone. I was like, how you doing? My name is Joe. Uh, you met my girlfriend yesterday, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, yeah, cool, cool, cool. So he, we talked for, I don't know, maybe a half hour, hour. He explained to me um, basically how he got started and, and, and you know, what, what the path was as far as going to a fi finding a school and getting enrolled and blah, blah, blah. So he said, uh, there's a school that is opening at the end of this year uh, in 99, which maybe October, November they opened, I think. Um, and actually it might've been like December. Uh, and he's like, uh, I can bring you down there to meet the trainer slash owner, Kevin. And, uh, you know, you can explain to him and blah, 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 and, and take it from there. So I met him down there one day, Kevin Knight, who is my trainer. Uh, thank you so much to Kevin for getting me started. Uh, we went down there. I met Kevin. I met Rich Ross. I met AJ Sparks. And I uh, explained, you know, I've always wanted to do this, and I think I could be pretty good at it, which, well, <laughs> I don't know. You can judge that for yourself. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying I was any good. I'm not saying I was the shits either, but, you know, I had my moments. So uh, I went down there, explained it to him, and he was like, okay, you know, we start on whatever, whatever, whatever date it was. Uh, but he's like, if you want to come in for a couple weeks, like on our for our Sunday classes, and kind of just watch and see if you think this is something you want to pursue after you've seen some training, that's fine too. So December 19th, 1999 was the first time I stepped foot in a wrestling school. And I went for six weeks after that, six Sundays straight. Um, I had already signed up, I think after the first week, if the first time I was there, I had already signed up. I was like, you know what? This is it. I'm in. This is what I want to do. I'm in. 
So December 1999 was the first time I was there. I spoke to my girlfriend during the week about it, and I was like, I'm in. I'm, we're going Sunday. I'm putting down a down payment. That's what happened. The, the week after, which would be the 26th, um, I signed an agreement to, to you know participate in one year of training for whatever it was a month. Um, I actually also had my cousin and his friend Casey that wanted to get started also. We all started together. Uh, so I got like a discount because I recruited two other students. So it, whatever it was a month, I forget at the time. I still have the contract at home though. Um, and I started going there again every Sunday. I went for six weeks because my class or my group hadn't started yet. So I would go to watch the first group just train. So for six weeks, I was absorbing all this knowledge before I even got in the ring. So I thought that was awesome. And there was a lot of, uh, uh, what's the word for it? I guess just out of the ring training, a lot of calisthenics and aerobics and working out and shit like that. So we didn't even get in the ring until I think like until four or five weeks. Uh, neither did the first group. So the first four or five weeks that I was just going every week to observe was all out of the ring stuff. And like learning how to roll, just using regular, like, uh, you know, those big gym mats that are outside the ring and like WWE shows, for example. Um, and uh, I just went and did that for a while. And then our class started sometime in mid-January. Uh, our first match, our first official match in front of a crowd was June 25th, 2000. Uh, my last match was June 20th, 2015. So almost 15 years to the day that I was in the ring. Um, since I've retired from, from in-ring stuff, I've been doing a lot of backstage stuff and a lot of some commentary I did, which is a blast. Um, but yeah, so, uh, that's basically how I got started. And then I did, it was, it was 12 months of training. We were, um, five to six days a week, uh, on weeks where we had shows we would do like one weekend out of the month, we would do a show on Saturday and Sunday or one or the other. So one week, you know, one month there could be one show on a Saturday or the following month there could be two shows, a Saturday and a Sunday. So we did um, five to six days a week with the training, depending on whether we had one or two shows. And I think only four days of those was mandatory, but I went to every single one. I would go even for like the other group just to watch. I mean, I wanted to observe, I wanted to learn, I wanted to absorb. So um, I went there religiously. I mean, there was, like I said, only one to two days a week where I didn't go. Um, so after the one year, all right, well, let me let me back up a little bit. During the one year, I met a couple people. I met um, other promoters in the area, other wrestlers that would come down because there was open ring time also, which was not just for the people training there. It was for outside independent guys that uh, just wanted to go wrestle for a night and go work out in a ring or whatever. So I met a lot of people through that, which helped obviously along the way, the, the upcoming years of my career. I met a couple promoters that way, who I ended up working for down the line. Um, and then after the one year, when I was done, I graduated. Um, I still have my certificate at home. Uh, I, I think maybe a week or two later, I started uh, going. I mean, I, I had still been going to other companies shows throughout this whole time. So I started uh, going to um, other shows with the intent of meeting the promoter and talking to the promoter or meeting some of the wrestlers and like, hey, who can you... Um, maybe get me in touch with that I can talk to about doing this or who can you get me in touch with that I can maybe hopefully get booked on something. So basically just that and I guess word of mouth helped me out a lot because there was a lot of companies running in New Jersey at the time. Um, so I would do that every weekend, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday if I could. And um, that's basically, you know, the rest is history as they say. Uh, my name not caught on, but people, you know, knew who I was, found out who I was, and I started doing stuff all over the place, and, uh, you know, uh, as the years went on, I would start, obviously, branching out of Jersey, I did a lot of stuff in Pennsylvania, a lot of stuff in Pennsylvania, September 20th, 2002, for World Star Wrestling, it was my first match in Pennsylvania, and I've wrestled at least two to three times a month since then, up until my very last match, which was also in Pennsylvania, um, every month for 15 years in Pennsylvania, at least two or three times a, a month. So Pennsylvania became like a second home to me. I still love it there. Um, so I did a lot of that, you know, some Connecticut, Ohio. I did a, a, some Houston stuff, uh, Canada. I did a couple of things in Florida, uh, West Virginia, um, Virginia, Richmond. I did some stuff, uh, but just all over, you know, anywhere I could in Massachusetts. I, I did some uh, training up there, but never actually on a show, just 
before a show. I never actually got booked. But, uh, you know, all over wherever I could go, basically, I got my name out. And uh, essentially, that's the whole story. I mean, if I left anything out, please feel free to ask me any more questions about it down there in the um, comment section. And again, thank you, David, for the question. I appreciate it. And guys, thanks for watching. And uh, please follow me on all social platforms at Joey Image TV, including Facebook, Twitch, Mixer, uh, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. And I think that's it. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out, and I will talk to you later.